We are now going to walk through the placement of a chest tube. Chest tubes are placed under general anesthesia or can also be placed with a patient sedated and with local anesthetic at the site of insertion. If one places a chest tube while a patient is under general anesthesia, it is often important to tap the chest before you actually place the chest tube in order to evacuate it of any accumulated air that may occur as a result of being put on pressurized gas. In order to place a chest tube, you will need sterile gloves, a sterile chest tube, a chest tube adapter with clamp, a syringe in order to aspirate any fluid or air that may have accumulated within the chest cavity, suture in order to secure the chest tube to the chest wall, a syringe and bupivacaine in order to administer local analgesia to the pleural surface. Indications for chest tube placement include continuous pneumothorax or tension pneumothorax, pyothorax, and also post-thoracotomy or post-surgery for repair of a diaphragmatic hernia. In order to place a chest tube, you must first clip the lateral chest from scapula to behind the last rib, sterilely prep that area, and surgically drape it. Have an assistant pull the skin forward from the scapula. You then want to count back from the 13th rib to identify the 9th or 8th intercostal space. Once you've identified the space, you're going to take a scalpel blade, make a full skin thickness incision midway between dorsal midline and ventral midline. Once you've made that incision, you're going to take your chest tube, and place it perpendicular to the patient and the table with the trocar directly against the subcutaneous tissues. You're going to grasp the chest tube firmly with your dependent hand and with your superior hand you're going to punch the chest tube through the chest wall and into the pleural space. You want to grasp the tube firmly with your dependent hand so that you halt its, uh, its advancement and so that you don't actually penetrate lung tissue as you're inserting the chest tube into the dog. Once you're inserted into the pleural cavity, you want to advance the chest tube and then slide this off the trocar. Clamping the chest tube as you go to prevent the insertion of air. Insert the chest tube till the, the distal part is about the second or third rib space. With the chest tube clamped, you're going to take a chest tube adapter and insert it into the back of the chest tube. The chest tube adapter comprises a Christmas tree, tubing, a C-clamp, and a three-way stopcock at the end, which is turned off towards the patient. Once you have properly inserted the chest tube, your assistant releases their hold on the skin, allowing it to fall back and to create a subcutaneous tunnel. Once your tube is in place, you're going to take a syringe, attach it to the end of your adapter, Turn your three-way stopcock off to the environment and release your clamp and aspirate any air and or fluid that may have accumulated within the chest cavity. Once that has been removed, clamp the adapter again. Turn the three-way stopcock off towards the patient. Remove your syringe and any air or fluid it then contains. And you can place a a male adapter plug at the other ends of your, your two ends of your three-way stopcocks. In order to secure the tube, you'll then take some suture and make a circumferential suture around the chest tube, uh, right above the point of insertion, and then attach the chest tube either via a Chinese finger trap tie 
or some people will place two butterflies of tape and secure those in two separate locations to the lateral chest wall. In order to care for the tube, it's important to place triple antibiotic or some beta dyne ointment at the point of insertion. Lightly put some a sterile telfa or sterile 4x4 gauze over that site and lightly wrap the body with some cling, some vet wrap, and maybe a little bit of elasticon to secure the bandage to the cranial aspect of the thorax. Tape the tube to the vet wrap and then you're ready to go. In order to provide proper analgesia for patients that have chest tubes in place, you can administer bupivacaine every six hours directly to the pleural surface through the chest tube. To do this, you would drop a volume of 0.5 to 1 milligrams per kilogram of bupivacaine, dilute it with an equal amount of saline into a syringe. Then you would insert it directly into the chest tube adapter, turn the three-way stopcock off to the environment, undo your C-clamp, and inject your fluid. What often happens is that the volume is too low to actually get to the pleural surface. Then I turn my adapter off to the patient, remove my needle and syringe, and insert air into my syringe, reinsert that into my adapter, and chase that volume of fluid with an air chaser in order to let the volume of fluid get to the pleural surface. Turn the three-way stopcock off to the patient, clamp it again, and that should help to provide local analgesia as well as whatever systemic analgesia you're providing for your patient.